ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin as we always do by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, of course, we've all been overwhelmed with the news coming out of Syria and the possible reaction that it may elicit from the world community, particularly here in America, as our president came out a few days ago and addressed the nation in a very solemn manner to say that this may lead to an escalation of violence and a threat of war. Not a war specifically, they call it, they call it strikes. But whatever you want to call it, it means that lives will be lost. And as I've shared with you many times in the eyes of God, all wars all wars are civil wars because as much as we are his children so are all people of this planet and so it behooves us as individuals as humanity for us to look for means uh, opportunities for us to end violence with different with different reactions as i shared with you last week We've heard that expression, um, you fight fire with fire. No, you don't. You fight fire with water. And certainly we, we know that, or we have been taught that you fight violence with violence. And again, we say, no, you don't. You can fight violence with love. You can fight violence with goodness. And as wild as that seems, we have examples and we have precedents for that, particularly by our Lord Jesus Christ, who fought violence, who fought ug the ugliness of evil at the, on the cross with the intense love that he had. And we see many, many examples throughout history where people appeal to nonviolence as a means of bringing about change and even revolution. But we find ourselves here at this juncture, not in history, but today, in 2013, we find ourselves today with the reality of a, of a dictator, of regimes that are trying to inflict all kinds of harm on their own people, and we find that there has to be some kind of response. What I'm here to share with you today is that as Christians, our responsibility or our response is, does not necessarily mean it has to be a response of political consequences. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, when you heard President Obama or when you hear President Putin, when you hear people in political uh, situations, they give you the impression that they are in charge. In other words, that they have the means to come up with an answer. But you know what? We as Christians also have a right to our opinion. We have a right to our answer to that evil. And our strategy, if you want to call it, does not come out of a military book. It comes out of the original manual for revolution, namely the Bible. Revolution meaning it revolved, it, it changed people's lives. And that's what I want to share with you today. Because ultimately, what is our goal in life, if not peace? Do you remember at, the, at the, the birth of Christ, the angels in heaven, what did they say? Peace to all the world, goodwill to men. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. That peace is something that comes to us from Christ. That at the birth, we hear the angels proclaiming now, as Christ leaves us some three years later, we read also a message of peace. In other words, Christ is enveloped in this message of peace. And I want to share that with you today because that's where I want to take off from. It comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 14, verses 25 and following. And this is at the Last Supper. Jesus is sitting there with his beloved disciples and he says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. In other words, I'm going to be leaving you, but the Holy Spirit is with you. Now, this is the next part is so important that we remember. He says, Peace. I leave you. My peace I give you. 
Not as the world gives you do I give you. Let your hearts not be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go hence. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ are so important that we remember today, particularly as we, we, we harbor fear, as we look to Syria, we look to the Middle East and we say, what's going to happen in the world? It is so important to heed the, this call that Jesus makes to us. He says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We have to believe that God is in charge. And if we can believe that, then we have to be, believe that also we are those players of God. In other words, as I've shared with you many times, it's not enough to pray, but we need to become those ambassadors so that prayer brings action to our lives. We need to become those ambassadors of peace in our lives. Many times we look to the big world situation and we say, why can't they find peace in the Middle East? Have you found peace with your loved ones? Are you at peace with your brother, with your sister, with your parents, with your children? How about with your neighbors, with your friends? So begin there. Begin by becoming an example, an ambassador of peace yourself. Then from there, we can start looking at the rest of the world and see that we play an integral role in bringing about peace in that world. You know what today is? Today in the Armenian Church is one of the five major feasts. It is called the exaltation of the Holy Cross. The huge cross of Christ stands there and it is exalted. This is a story that comes to us from, uh, from uh, the, the third or fourth century. And I'm not going to go into the details. You can check out your Sunday school books, but you know that it takes place in Jerusalem where the cross of Christ was, uh, was lifted up and people were humbled in the presence of the cross. Well, think about it. What's the problem in the world today, if not a lack of that humility? People thinking that they are in charge, that they will bring about that peace. Christ says, under no uncertain terms, he says it very plainly. He says, I'm giving you a peace, not like the world can give you, but it's a peace that is real, that is lasting. A peace that you need, a peace that begins in your heart, and once it does, it reaches out to your, to your circumstances. And I wish to impress upon you that today as Armenian Christians, as one of the oldest Christian traditions here on this planet, we have an obligation to present this peace to the world. Do you ever notice when you go to an Armenian church, there is one phrase that comes out to you over and over and over again. It's a very unusual phrase, and I'll tell you why. The priest turns around and he says, and he blesses the people. Peace to you. Why is that unusual? If there's any people in the world, it's the Armenians who've never known peace. We've had every kind of militant, every kind of barbarian uh, come and rape and pillage the people, the land. If anybody doesn't know peace, it's the Armenian. And yet the Armenian church over and over emphasizes this one statement where the priest turns and says, peace to you, peace unto all. Well, where is, what is that peace? That's that inner peace. That's the peace that comes from God. And that peace is something that's inside of you and me. We need to begin to become ambassadors of that peace. We need to reflect that peace in our lives. But as I said, by first and foremost, being at peace with our surroundings and then making that an example of how we live how we interact with other people. Don't look to politicians to find peace. Don't look to world leaders. Don't look for governments to find peace. In fact, if you leave it to them, they will teach you and they will teach your children that the only way to answer violence is by more violence. They will teach you 
that to fight fire, you need fire. What Christ says is to fight fire, you need water. To fight evil, what you need is love in your heart. Place that love in your heart and leave the rest to God. The peace of the Lord is left with you. Today, as we look on a world that is plagued with violence, and today as they rattle their sabers to go into Syria and start bombing, our heart goes out to the people who will be innocent bystanders in this, in this carnage. And even more, our heart goes out to the people of the world. The people of the world who will understand that this is the way you deal with violence. No, the way you deal with violence is with the ultimate weapon that is given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of love. And that love is something that you have in your heart, and guess what? Everyone has in their heart. We need to come to terms with that, to bring that out. And just as the Holy Cross was elevated in Jerusalem, and we humbled ourselves in front of that cross, so too we humble ourselves in front of the peace that comes from Christ. As I promised you last week, again next week, I will continue on this topic of peace. I wanted to share this with you today on this feast of the Holy Cross. Until next week, I ask you to fervently pray. Pray for peace in the world, but let it begin with you and me. Become that ambassador, become that example of peace in your own life. And in so doing, remember always to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.